Right guys, so <laughs> welcome back to another video. <laughs> like I said, I'd start with Curtis's wrap and it's epic. We've agreed, although he is losing half of it out of the bottom. So we're just leaving our lunch spot now um, and heading back up actually. We're currently, what is this Jack? A valley? Well, we're in Andorra, Andorra La Vella, which is the Andorra La Vella, yeah, Where which the is the valley of Andorra basically. Um, so we're in a valley in the Pyrenees, so we'll be heading back up and along um, on route to Barcelona. So see how this one goes. So back on the road, um, or just about to, um, we've got to begin this climb. Um, got a nice fresh tank of fuel, obviously. So um, dropping below 25 miles per gallon now. Mind you, Jack's on like 14 in the V8. So, uh, yes, back over um, the Pyrenees. Like I said, we were obviously just in the valley. So we're heading back up <coughs> across and then um, down towards Barcelona. Um, it's a beautiful day, nice little lunch stop. It's currently half past one. Um, Jack's currently shouting at Maud because she's over there behind the camera and she left the door open. <laughs> she's taking photos to be fair so important business. Anyway, set the road, Curtis is jamming out to some heavy D and B. James, I was waiting for my girlfriend who was waiting for us. Did you get angry because she left the door open? Oh I mean it's not conducive to departure if she walks away with the door open. <laughs> Right, let's go. Let's go. It's a nice town, this. Um, I don't have a clue where we are, but it's very pretty. Right, so we are changing plan a little bit actually um, we were heading for Barcelona however um, just where we ended up coming out of the Pyrenees um, it's kind of not on the way uh, not that we were going to go into Barcelona Central but um, you know we were certainly going to go around the ring road as such but uh, no we're going to head for a place called Tarragona um, it's just more of a direct route We've currently travel 950 miles ish since home uh, yeah so 22 degrees here um, direct sun it's like a greenhouse in here uh, but yeah I bet you're baking um, but uh, but yeah so I should have got my aircon regassed really but I think it might have a little bit of a leak um, so after we did the cam bell they took the rad out and everything, I didn't bother, so. I've not done this coastal road we're doing before. I've driven to Barcelona, I've driven to Madrid, I've done the north coast to Portugal and all that, but I've not done this south coast, so I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, I'm hoping we're gonna get some epic views of the sea um, and maybe even jump in there tonight. Um, I've got the paddle boards and stuff and the fishing rods and I'm certainly not gonna be able to use them in the Sahara, so. Averaging 25.3 miles per gallon since home, which I'm astonished by, um, considering, you know, I've got the tent on, then wheels on top of the tent and everything else. I'm definitely over three and a half tonnes. Um, and we've been climbing some mountains, you know, this is, that includes going up and over the Pyrenees, you know, through Andorra and all that. So, um, I'm mega impressed. I paid 4,000 quid for this car. I mean, I know it owes me now a hell of a lot more. Um, I will do a video at some point of, you know, what it's cost, uh, what I've spent on it, the maintenance side of it. Just, just, I mean, for my benefit as well as yours. Um, but especially the maintenance side of it. I've done a lot of additional pre preventative maintenance for this trip for obvious reasons. Stuff that really I didn't have to do. But I took it as a precautionary measure, but the car's 
been faultless for you know coming up to a thousand miles so far. Um, you know, for something I paid four thousand quid for, could have done this in a completely stock D3. In all honesty, um, as long as I had a roof rack on it, pretty much could have done it in that. In fact, you don't even need a roof rack. I could have done it in a ground tent and some basic, basic. To, you know, look at um, Curtis in the D1. He hasn't got he hasn't got a roof rack. So yeah, you know, it just goes to show. Do your research with them. Find a good one. Uh, I know I've had problems, but they're a great car when they are working and not costing you a fortune. Um, the downside is you pay little money for them. It's usually because they've got issues arising. So once you get them sorted, um, they're they're great cars. I I love this car so much. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm waffling on as I always do. Um, so I don't want to bore you guys. Let's carry on, um, see how far we get, and head south. So I've had to pull over oh. some car dealership. Look at this gem of an 80 series. Look how clean it is. Up for sale. It doesn't got a price in it, which is annoying. But what a beauty. Absolutely original. Oh, I love that. If you want probably what's a rust free 80 series Land Cruiser. Uh, I don't know how much. Check out whatever this place is. Would be cool. Or telephone that number. That is mega. <clears throat> so quick pit stop after seeing the 80 series. Ooh, another three door discovery there. Um, I don't even know where we are, if I'm honest. Um, between Andorra and Tarragona, put it that way. But gonna go into this supermarket kind of thing. Need to have a wee and uh, stretch my legs. Uh, well, I don't know where the toilets are. Ah, downstairs. I love going into there's something about foreign supermarkets that interests me a lot. Anyway, I'm not going to record this bit because it will get my chap out, so bonjour. Is it ringing? Oh yeah. No. no. Maybe it's out of season. So we're actually going to try and head down to Valencia um, because where we are at the moment, um, or where we're sort of planning-ish, is about nine hours um, from where we need to be to cross to Morocco. So we're actually going to cross probably at Tarifa, um, depending. We need to make a bit more of a plan, don't we, Jack, really? Um, yeah, brother, yeah. But yeah, we're just trying some campsites now. Um, but we found one, Valencia. If we can make Valencia tonight, that's another three and a half hours. It's currently, what is it, half three now? Half three, yeah. Half three, another three and a half hours, get there for seven, and then that gives us about seven, eight hours uh, tomorrow to get down to Tarifa. We can camp there for the night, get the very first thing in the morning. So um, it should be fine. Jack's just... Um, Munching on a whole Jamaican ginger cake. It's great. Um, so none of them are answering? No, not yet. I will do more research on the car. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon we should do? Should we do north of Valencia or south? There's, there looks like to be more campsites south of Valencia, but it's, gonna be who's... it's not going to be a nightmare getting around. It's not going to be rush hour when we get there. There is no rush hour, I think. 
Don't worry. Right. We are not in Barcelona or There's a good Madrid. One. Fair enough. Good one, Col Colvera. Um, ideally, because we're doing the coastal road, we want to camp near the beach. If it was up to Curtis, we'd be probably pitching a tent on the stones by the sea, wouldn't it? Yeah. Less people than that. Do you know what it's saying? Oh, you speak Spanish, don't you? No. I thought you did. There's more. Between the two of us, we can make it. Do you think they're out of season? Possibly. I can't believe how warm it is here though. It's beautiful. Hola, buenas tardes. So, how about English? Yes, you do? Perfect. We are three uh, four by fours looking for camping tonight. Do you have space by any chance? We have a tent. Yes, we do. Yes, we have space. Perfect, thank you. Uh, do, we okay. need, do we make a reservation or? Uh, just... No, yes, no, yes, no. What time, what time do you close? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Okay, see you soon. Yeah, bye. Easy. Wonderful. Camping, south of, uh, South of Valencia. Let's go. Perfect. So that's a good route. And that'll leave us uh, probably six and a half, seven hours then um, yeah, that's a good, for tomorrow. That's a good four hours to push now. But yeah, that's fine. That's welcome. Uh, we like that, don't we? So and we like quite a pretty, Curtis, pretty day today. Curtis just wants to spend yeah, every hour right. in his truck anyway. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't really care where we are, what we're doing. I'm just <laughs> along for the ride. Absolutely. So, no, it's going well. And this sun, I'm enjoying it. I did actually bring sun cream and mosquito spray. There we are. Well done. Yeah, see, I'm well prepared. Right, should we push on? Yeah, that's it. Let's go. Wonderful. new fridge because his fridge is knackered and it's getting warm and me and Curtis haven't got any space so we're at a place called Nor Auto. So this is like Spain's version of Halfords. I don't know how good it is. Ooh, tires. Let's have a look around shall we? All camping stuff. Curtis is going to buy a bike or a scooter. Mm. I don't know if there's anything of use there. Not really. But I don't know if this is, I don't think this is as good as Halfords actually. I was expecting more. But maybe, bikers as well. They've got a big workshop around the back, hence for all the tires, so. Paint. I wonder what I can paint whilst I'm here. Oh, 
fuel cans. To be fair, I haven't got any fuel cans. Jack has, but obviously he runs a V8, so he needs to. <clears throat> I can't see any fridges. I see a cooler. Ah, oh, he's just asking. Anything you like, Curtis? Staying away from the subject, is I need, a f <laughs> I need a phone holder, that's what I came here for. I'm worried they're going to be like £300. Hmm. Right, right, so. Bit of a failed trip. Um, we've kind of gone a little bit out of the way for Jack to get a fridge. Um, said they had one in stock online and uh we just got there and typically um they just turned around and said oh someone's reserved it how what are the chances uh one in stock and someone's bloody reserved it so anyway we're gonna head down towards valencia now um we're actually gonna camp in benedorm tonight so we might get on it who knows um bought myself a phone holder though so i've got to set that up quick and then i can stop holding the phone which will be a bonus anyway i need a shower i'm hot I'm sweaty it's 20 past five and we've probably got another three hours to go yet so we better get moving on so um plans change again um, which is fine um, in fact it's, in a way it's more beneficial for today less beneficial for tomorrow but it doesn't make much of a difference but uh, weirdly Jack sent the link for the campsite um, that Maud found um, which is just south of Valencia but when they sent me the link and I opened it it's in Benidorm um, which is a bit more than just south of Valencia um, so, um, anyway, for some reason you click the link and it takes you to another campsite, which is one that's in Benidorm, so it's a good job we didn't go to that one because um, she's booked us on to this one, um, which is fine, uh, which just means obviously we're not going to Benidorm tonight, um, we are going to some small village just south of Valencia, so a little bit less to go tonight, a little bit more to go tomorrow. Unsure if Jack still wants to go and buy a fridge. Um, he's had a bit of a frustrating day today. Um, obviously, fridge is broken, his diesel heater's leaking diesel. <laughs> well, he just he spent 180 quid on a Chinese diesel heater, which there's good stories and bad stories about them. I know people have had Chinese diesel heaters for years and years and years and never had a problem with them. But he went and spent 180 quid on an 8 kilowatt, the better one you can get. And as soon as he opened the box, the remote hasn't worked. Um, it's been coming up with an error code. Um, and then now it's, it's leaking diesel. He's put it on his roof rack and it's leaked diesel down the side of his truck, which trouble is, is then underneath kind of an open window, which he's made like a vent for the pipe. But I don't think any diesel's gone in his truck, but if it does, it stinks and it stays there. But either or, you don't want diesel dripping down the side of your truck. So um, these next two days are going to be a bit like that. Tomorrow's going to be the same. It's going to be a pretty intense day of driving. Um, which is absolutely fine uh, because that puts us perfectly in line to cross uh, Morocco for the first thing Wednesday morning. Then we storm down to Marrakesh, um, it's all highway down there and uh, we can have a couple of days rest over there. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Good on the right there, chat. Uh, see you later. Yeah, uh, Curtis and I will uh, meet you in Morocco. It's a bit of a ghetto here, wherever we are. We're not sharing your tent with you. Could you imagine what the girls are like coming out of that ghetto in there? I bet it's cheap though. 
just so you know. I wouldn't want to eat on the bed. Ham sandwiches everywhere. Just so you know, I've never done it. Promise. Um, <clears throat> but you never say never, right? Um, anyway, can't remember what I was talking about. All I know is I'm getting tired. I'm not getting hungry. Lunch has still filled me up, but I am getting tired, and we've got a long way to go still. So I'll catch up with you when we get to wherever we next stop at. Who knows? Might be a Lidl's. It might be a. Oh shit! Curtis nearly went out the back of Jack. I don't know why Jack didn't go, it's his fault if you're watching this Jack uh, yeah no it's, uh, who knows I'm fucking waffling because I'm tired um, so I'll shut up now see you in a bit, bonjour And yeah, we've, yeah, we've gone three countries. So we are. Don't know what this place is called. Probably quiet because it's about half eleven. Um, but yeah, we're down at camp. Um, just had a nice dinner of some cheese bread and meat and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're gonna hit the hay. It's been a long day. Um, and we've got a long day tomorrow. We've got um, nearly 500 miles to cover to get down to Algeciras, um, ready for the ferry on Wednesday morning. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a long day tomorrow. Um, eight hours of driving, roughly. So yeah, it's been good. Um, gonna hit the hay, and then um, I'll just catch up with you tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a pretty, pretty awesome drive, just long. So, um, see what we come up with, and then um, won't be long before the real excitement starts when we hit Morocco. So, anyway, feels like people are watching me. Um, yeah, I'm going to hit the hay, and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Bonjour. morning so day four um exactly the same spot i filmed last night uh, the toilet thing just been up showered it's 6 a.m um i've got to sit about now till the others wake up because they don't wake up early like i do um but look up even done my hair for you guys i don't look so much of a state um, but yeah, ready for the day, feel good, had a good night's sleep. Oh, you can't see me at all now, so you just have to listen. Um, yeah, we're gonna head off. We well, need to be in cars moving at 0800 hours. Um, so get the guys up at quarter past, half past seven. Um, they might make a quick coffee or, oh, let's see if you can see me now. Bit more light there, but no. Um, no, no, cool. Cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, we'll be up, make a coffee, and I'll speak quietly now because they're around here. There we go. They're just there. I don't want to wake him up, plus I haven't got curtains, so this must be annoying. But yes, up, make a coffee, or get one on the road, not sure. Um, we're Valencia now, and then we've got to head down to Algeciras. So it's going to be an eight hour day. It's seven, seven and a half hours driving, plus a stop or two, so. Um, but we'd like to make it in good time. Um, 
not do what we did last night and get into camp at quarter to ten. Um, but I'm glad we did it because obviously it saves hours tomorrow. So I'm going to make a coffee now and uh, wait for them to get up. Jack's a bit steamed up in there. He's just see his head. That worked out well. I reckon they've been bonking. Why else would it be so steamed up, eh? Naughty, naughty. Anyway, leaving in good time. Miles per gallon's gone up. So, will he make it? Trials course. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was actually going to try it then. <laughs> Oh, that sounds good, that V8. Go on, Curtis, straight up there. Oh, he's even going on the real vertical bit. <laughs> this thing seems to go anywhere. I'll be surprised. Look, don't even touch the front. Oh, oh no! <laughs> he's got it wedged. It's triple lock that thing on 35s. And I promise you now, he will not stop until he's done it. Very, very soft ground. Yes, uh, look at that. Go on, go on, get it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that was easy. Legend. Maybe over there we'll get some sun because this is not what it's supposed to be. Rain, there's even been a little bit of hail, but over that hill looks hopeful, fingers crossed. Starting to get mountainous now. I was looking. Trust me, I was the first there. Check this. seemed very confused when Jack said petrol rather than diesel but yeah it's a nice little spot and then there's a restaurant there oh well there um, maybe we'll get some food because um, we're well over halfway now and I'm hungry and I can't be asked to cook anything so um, yeah this is pretty cool I like it so yeah we've just pulled up down by hotel um, just to have a bit of lunch Jack's too, so I'm going to have some leftover leftover cheese bit of salami kind of chorizo stuff this stuff is game changer whatever it is but yeah a bit of cheese and bread and stuff Jack, are you cooking up anything special? Yeah, a bit of rice, uh, tomato, kind of tuna salad situation going on. 
Ooh. Maud, how are you feeling? Very happy. You're good? It's lunchtime. Not ill? Yeah. Strepsils have sorted you out? <laughs> good, I'm glad. So, yeah, let's get into this. So we're currently coming into Malaga and we're sat on the side of the motorway queuing. Jack's found some kind of camper van place where hopefully he can buy a fridge. He definitely needs one. Obviously we're going to have to completely stop the fridges and freezers um, tonight because over in Morocco food... Did you know my penis used to be in the Guinness Book of Records? the librarian told me to take it out. <laughs> Do you know what was even funnier about that joke? You making a video? I'm halfway through a YouTube video and I'm not editing that out. Well, that might be the case. <laughs> Just see your phone in your hand. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> I don't even know what... I don't even know what I was talking about and Curtis just comes out of a penis in a book joke. Um, yeah, food in Morocco. You know what boys, you can't weld on the moon. No way. It's because they know I'm recording a video now. <laughs> They're going to just crack out all these jokes. I'm taking a serious note on that last joke though. You wouldn't need a welding gas would you because there's no atmosphere. Ruin the uh, you wouldn't need an arc, uh, shooting death. Oh, god, they're talking about. But you get a perfect bee with no organ. You also know you don't even need Look, they're both like mechanical people, and now they're talking about welding and sh anyway. Right, we're going to go and buy a fucking fridge. Um, I'm gonna show you how long the structure queue is. And it's that, all no, Jack's fault. Really and uh, we better get a fridge. This will be the third day. attempt. Look. Look at this. Look at that. Even worse. Oh, I hate queuing. Everyone that knows me knows I hate queuing as well. Right, so we're at some caravan centre. There he is. He's got a fridge. We're in business. Are you happy now? We're in business, save the day. 40 litre as well. Yeah man, we've got a good one. Now we found this amazing like camper van place in the arse end of nowhere. Which wasn't open when we got here. Which wasn't open when we got here. So. Because they shut between 2 and 4 for lunch. A 1 and 4, they take 3 hours for lunch. This is oh, amazing. Such a way of life. I know. And they're, this is off season. They don't like working man. I That's like funny. it. But anyway, luckily they've got a whole bunch of uh, and it was cheap. parts for your camper van. And including a 40 litre Fridge. Yeah, it's which was 300 and something euros, which is a bargain. Which is fine, yeah. yeah. It wasn't, uh, wasn't too expensive. I was yeah. expecting to get ripped off, but no, it's fine. Absolutely. It's so, so it's going to do the trick. It's going to bring the car in. And, uh, are you going to fit it uh, now? What are you going to do with your old one, though? Leave it in a bin. Really? Is it that knackered? What am I going to do? Put it on the roof and drag it all around Africa? Could do. You've got space, <laughs> so I would. I'd offer to put it on my roof, but... You haven't got any space in your room. You could put it in and out of Curtis's car. He only needs it out when he's asleep. Yeah. I wouldn't chuck it away. No, I wasn't quite. All right. Sell it as spares or repairs. Yeah. Someone would buy that. That's right. If it's a hundred quid back. Maybe I can give it to a Moroccan. Maybe they oh, might love yes, it. Yes, there you, you go. Know? We can transfer it. I don't need it. As they can, a... They'll probably fix it. You know, they'll just regas it or something. Or, they would. Know. They can transport fish in it. Yeah. There she is. There she is. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So I found this shop in half an hour. In a, it's, it's what one go. Yesterday, for some reason, we went to Novoto twice. And well, you know what they say. This is third time lucky. This is definitely third time lucky. <coughs> no, we got real lucky. There we go. There it is. It's a chest tight one. I was in charge. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I can't take any credit. For this. No. It's, it's you know. But Were you in charge for the first two? Yes, then that's <laughs> right. I have to relinquish this <laughs> There we go. Well, that's so, okay. look, look. Um, let's go and get it fitted. Let's do it. Yeah. I take one All right, on it, uh, Oh, this is couple goals. <laughs> <laughs>
get to Morrison's, get some shopping in, and then we'll head to camp and we're all tired. It's six o'clock, miles per gallon are down, it's because I've been leading today. Um, and there's been so many hills, such a strong headwind. Um, so we're down nearly one mile per gallon. 25.6 is what I was on. Um, but yeah, we're nearly 1,700 miles down from home. So, good progress. Um, we're down here at the end of the day and we're ready for the ferry in the morning. Here we go. Look how beautiful it is. I'd love to camp down here. But I don't think it's allowed. guys we're here um, we've just come through customs in Gibraltar um, so we're gonna spend the night here I believe um, try and camp on the beach which would be really cool and we're just trying to find the Morrisons at the moment <laughs> uh, those of you that know but I didn't get a chance to film it but as you come in come through customs and uh, you actually drive over Gibraltar Airport runway um, because they uh, it's, it's, it's like the main road to go in and out of Gibraltar but you've got to cross the runway so every time a plane comes they just put barriers up stop the traffic briefly it's, it's like a lift bridge in London but it's the main airport of Gibraltar it's very odd gave Jack the task to uh, guide us to the beach uh, where we're going to camp tonight, fingers crossed. Um, I don't actually know if it's allowed yet, but that's my plan, everyone likes it, so we're going to give it a go. So uh, I'm going to go to the uh, east side of Gibraltar, uh, should be able to do it there, but we will see. So uh, there's not much to film right now obviously we're in traffic and stuff um, so I will catch up with you when we find a camp right so just quickly want to show you this bit so this look airfield ahead this is the live uh, air runway so this is Gibraltar Airport okay and this Look, it's literally just the runway. And this is the main road. Always remember that time that you got stuck in traffic on yeah, the yeah. runway. Look at it. How mad. There's a plane there. And yeah, this is where you have to cross in and out of Gibraltar. Um, and then they just put barriers down if a plane comes in. It's, it's crazy. Right, so... Uh, that was the campsite that they had found, um, however there was no room, so I've actually just used the app Park for Night, um, which I am a member of. I can't remember what it is, I've got a feeling it's like seven quid a year, it's, I might be wrong, I might be completely wrong, but I'm sure it's seven quid a year, but it's very very handy um, for like wild camping and stuff, local knowledge, blah blah, blah. Um, and it's just shown like quite a remote car park right down on the beach um literally a couple of miles away so we're gonna go down there and check it out see what we can find if it feels safe we'll do it if it's allowed we'll do it um uh but yeah so nearest camp nearest the next nearest campsite is not answering the phone uh, but yeah, we'll sleep uh, now. It's, um, it's near nearly nine o'clock now so uh, and we've got an early start tomorrow. Right, so many, <coughs> many thanks to Part 4 Night App. It has come through with this one. Uh, let me turn the camera around. So, as you can see, thanks to my light bar, that is the sea. There is Curtis, actually, 
on the beach um, having a play. There's actually, hold on. There's a Hilux camper just there as well. And there's Jack. So there's people already camped down here. Curtis. Look at Curtis. We've lost him. He's in the he's in the light. <laughs> this is a heck of a spot though. Isn't it great? I just hope it doesn't get too windy. He's oh up. my god, he's what's up. he doing? Is he stuck? Is he stuck? Oh my god, is he stuck? <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. He's just toying with us. Yeah. He loves this kind of thing. This is he's all no, over. He's in his element, isn't he? Literally. This is gonna be a good spot. Yeah, we're actually nearly stuck. He was. He was. We were just saying, did you get stuck? Because it's soft down there. Extremely soft. I am very, very nearly stuck. <laughs> Please don't get stuck because we both weigh three and a half tons and we'll never get on there. Be your winch, Jack. What, from here? Yeah. All well, the way down. you have to link it up with his. <laughs> Go on, son. He's loving life. He is still running 40 psi, though. Oh, you can see it. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be going a bit faster if I were you, mate, not stopping. God, oh, it's photo time. <laughs> anyway, we need to set up camp. So I left it a bit late to do this video, actually. We've all... Oh, actually, Curtis hasn't. Really fucking weird, <clears throat> well, this is partly why I'm doing it. <laughs> so, I may, may treat myself to a lovely steak. I did make some chips as well, but they're gone. Peas, but I've got nothing to put them in. Jack and Maud had the best idea. They bought a cooked chicken. From Morrison's in Gibraltar. Chicken, man. Can't beat it. No, this is a late night to camp, and what a great idea! Um, that went down a tree, and they've got leftovers. Curtis is making himself a decent meal. I just don't want him to ruin it. What are you making, Curtis? He doesn't have a name. No, I know, but just beef, fried onions, fried mushroom, and a cream cheese pastry wrap. Yeah, I mean it. Because uh, I bought them a white chocolate gherkin in it as well. Curtis, <laughs> Curtis is one of these where he's like, if he likes something, he'll put it in whatever he's cooking. Yeah, if you like the food, how can it not taste good when you mash them all together? This is it. Now, I know that argument, but I've experienced it firsthand. It doesn't, doesn't always work. Um, but essentially what he's got going on here is, well, like a steak meal. Yeah, that's a bit odd. This is this is this is getting weirder. It's gonna be a sensation, just you wait. It's almost. Do you know what it almost is? It's very much close to a beef stroganoff. Like okay. without you even trying. <laughs> you wouldn't even know what one All you need was. really is a bit of mustard. Brandy and cream. Got any of that? Jack has very kindly given me some extra ingredients, not the beer. I actually reckon, Jack. Cream cheese. No, it's not cream. Bear with me here because we could suddenly make this work. Jack, do you have any Dijon mustard? Curtis, hang fire because. This could be a genius, <laughs> like I'm excited for you now. Let me see if I've got some Dijon mustard. Um, oh, I've got some whole grain. That'll, that'll kind of work. You like mustard? That's just getting into too many flavors. I'm not big. No, 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 listen to me, right? Whole grain mustard, cream cheese, we'll bind it all together. So you were telling me cream cheese was a bad idea a minute ago. Because I've just, this is, <laughs> this is the chef in me. I've gone, how can I, 
How can I make such a disaster taste good? <laughs> now, good taste good. have you got any rice? Uh, yeah, but I ain't got time for that. Oh, I've got a boiled water up there. It's going in a wrap. No. Like, bear with me. <laughs> oh, I want to improve this oh, for you. Oh, I'm sure in here, particularly, I'm even letting my own steak go cold now, just for you. Right, I'm gonna have to find it. I'll be back in a minute. We now, so essentially, as you saw, he, he did some um, quick cooked stir fry beef and onions and mushrooms. Now, he was then gonna put that in a wrap with some cream cheese and started chopping gherkins in it and all sorts. And to be honest, Curtis, fuck knows what else we would have put in it because you scare me. But as you just saw, I had the right idea now. So I actually had some Dijon mustard with me. I put, I didn't have a load, so I put some whole grain with it. Um, I've used sort of a third of the cream cheese. Um, let that melt down. Um, half an oxo cube in there. Um, and uh, just a bit, made a bit of stock. Now, ideally, this should have brandy in it. Because if you ask me, that makes it. But this is now getting to be pretty acceptable sugar nut. Now, Curtis still wants me to put it in a wrap, but I'm not. Over here on my stove, actually, is that boiling? Fair enough. Boiling in the bag, rice. One of them going in. I actually, I've even left my own dinner look for you. Neglected. Neglected my absolutely wonderful ribeye steak, which was so good. You have tried this, haven't you? I have. And? I am blown away. Exactly. So, I just don't like people eating shit food. <laughs> I'd have been quite happy. Cut. What was the worst meal you just said you had? Yeah, that was bad. But this... Rice. Baked beans and raw onion. Rice, baked beans and raw <laughs> onion. As a meal. This is what I'm working with. So, anyway. Have a look at that. Now I'm going to show you in a minute, when I pour up some rice, make a plate for Curtis, and we'll see his first reaction. He's not that keen on rice either. Well, he's not that keen on me doing rice for him because he wants to use that wrap, but I'm going to make him frisbee that into the sea in a minute. <laughs> now you're going to have to try one. <laughs> I'm going to cream cheese a wrap for you and you can see. All right, we'll do that. We'll do that. <laughs> Square plates, I have to say. Square plates are for amateurs. Yeah, that's why it's not in the house. It got demoted from the house to the truck. <laughs> right. So. It's come out well. It's come out really well. Unfortunately, Curtis has already cooked the steak, so the steak's a little bit tough. But... I'd, I'd feed that on a first date. That's how proud I am of it. I admit, I am blown away. There you you turned what I thought was a good dinner. Bon appetit. I want you to eat that and enjoy. <laughs> I, I can't have a whole wrap. What did I make you the other night? Spag bowl. Spag bowl the other night. Spag bowl the other night. This is the sort of thing, if I went to a restaurant, I wouldn't even think about ordering this because it's just too adventurous. Would you even know what beef stroganoff is? No. <laughs> and yet here I am eating it out the back of a truck mm. on the road in the south of Spain. See, I told you it'd be the best experience of your life this trip. Blown away. Mm. Worth every penny. What have you got to say to people that haven't been on one of our trips before? <laughs> <laughs> do it. Certainly missing out. Yeah. Certainly missing out. What do you reckon? No brainer. I mean, 100%. you weren't sure about the mustard, were you, at first? No. Is that because you're not a mustard lover or because like you thought. Adventurous. 
Because you thought I was going to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have learnt to trust you, George. Well, there we go. Enjoy that. I mean, we're only on that day four. Sensational. We're only on day four, yeah. so we've still got 20 more days together. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot more food to consume. I don't know how many more times my mind can be blown. Well, we're only just starting. There you go. So, you don't have to eat shit when you're camping. <laughs> it's not shit. <laughs> you don't have to eat rice, beans, and raw onion when you're camping. No, what do more call it? A beige diet. Yeah, well, Kurt, no, not whilst you're camping, but Curtis has very much got what Maud calls a beige diet, which I love, which is literally anything beige. So chips, chicken nuggets, fish fingers, pizza. Yeah, see, Two that's... Kids food. Yeah, kids' food. <laughs> that is... Or Curtis is just a big child, so... Um, he didn't tell us this as a customer when he signed up to this trip, but <laughs> I should have asked dietary requirements. And if I read that, I would have said he's not allowed on. But there you go. We always like a challenge. And I'm going to actually, I reckon in Morocco, what we'll do is we'll do a, I'm going to do a cooking lesson for you. So I'm going to make you cook one of these. Ooh. Yeah, see? Educational. That's what these trips are about. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, over the next 24 days, I'm going to teach you how to cook five dishes. <laughs> then you can have five home cooked meals per week and then two takeaways, because that's how, <laughs> well actually I'm more five takeaways and two home cooked meals a week, but up for that? Yeah. Good, right. Ride. There we go. See, he's loving that. It's desperate for me to have some in a wrap, which I'll, I'll oblige, but. Begrudgingly try, but you're right. going to love it. A few mouthfuls. Yeah, maybe I'll love it, but. A few mouthfuls. Anyway, I've got loads to do. Still haven't got my tent out. Got all this to pack away. I had a whole bot litre of olive oil um, open up in one of my wolf boxes. So I've got to go and sort that out. But I don't even know what the time is. But anyway, I'll catch you guys in a bit. So it is morning of day five. <clears throat> A bit late to bed last night just sorting some bits out um, but as you know we couldn't get a campsite and um, I found this little spot by the beach now I've got to show you this it's pretty epic this is what we woke up to so we're right down on the beach someone this whoever's Hilux this is they're actually from Germany <coughs> But we're next to this old monument, which I don't know what it is, but it's pretty cool. And there's the Gibraltar rock, or rock of Gibraltar, sorry, in the background. But what a stunning place. I wish we could stay for sunrise, but we've got a ferry to catch. Um, had a great night's sleep, though. There's something about this noise of the sea in the background that's very, very calming. But uh, yeah, it's nice and warm. I actually slept with a window open last night, but uh, yeah, this is beautiful. Um, there were some dodgy things going on over here though. Weirdly, there was like a bike that come down or come off the beach, come up and round in the car park. And literally as he come round here, a car come flying in, opened the boot and went. Um, but Jack said, um, this beach is heavily, heavily used for um, smuggling drugs from Africa because obviously it's quite a short distance they bring them straight on the beach so it might have been that but who knows but yeah what a place boats are out fishermen are out early I would love to go and have a look in there but they've chopped obviously the first few steps off Curtis got some wicked photos last night using his night mode Almost like uh, light painting kind of stuff. Just about to see where he drove on the beach. That's uh, where he come up. But yeah, look at this. Some shack. I don't know if these might be toilets, you know. Great if they were. No. 
No, maybe they are. I mean, there's two doors, but nothing in there. What are you looking for? A bin. There is a bin down there. There's one down here. Yeah, just there. So, anyway, there's the beach. And there's a bin, remember, leave no trace. Only tire tracks and footsteps. Unless you're in the farmer's field, which you shouldn't be. Or anywhere else you shouldn't be. Do not leave tire tracks. <laughs> right. So we're going to head to the other side of that rock now. It's about a 25 minute drive to Al Cirrus and catch the ferry. And uh, yeah, what a stunning place. This is Algeciras Port, we're just coming on to now. That's a pretty uh, post-apocalyptic Mad Max kind of view, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah, so lots of cranes. Quite pretty actually. Rock of Gibraltar in the background. Here is. Oh, you can give me a little bit more. Here is. Oh, you a little bit more to drive, but the fuel over there is <laughs> Right, so that was painful, but thankfully Jack speaks Spanish. So, uh, well, to a certain degree. Um, complete change of plan, which is great. Um, we he just done us a crazy crazy cheap deal um to go to uh, Coyuta, um <coughs> which tangier meds here Coyuta's is about 40 kilometers above it it's it's like the closest point it's like the dover to calais do you know what i mean it's the closest closest point um but where it's sort of part of spain if you like um shit parking ticket I don't know what I did with it. It's in my pocket. I think. Yeah. Um, <coughs> bear with me. I'll do one of these stupid lean over bloody. Oh. Fuck. What do they do? Trap you in? Um, there's two barriers like that just sandwich you in. Anyway, what I was saying, so we 
we got just done a cracking deal on Kahuta and um, we saved a fortune so um, it was nearly 300 euros um, to go to Tangier that's for a return per vehicle yeah, it was nearly 300 euros to go to ta uh, Tangier per vehicle with one person. Um, however, 40 kilometres east of Tangier is Kuta, and um, that was 176 euros return. So, um, when I was looking this morning for the 10 o'clock uh, Algeciras to Cuta, I said to Jack about an alternative route. The only difference is it's a bit more complicated to go through customs there um, because it's still kind of part of Spain or whatever. Um, so it, it can be hard of work, but you know what? Why not? Went, in and went on an adventure. Um, but it was £110 each way when I looked this morning and I've just paid £155 return and it's an open return as well so we come back whenever we want um, so I've saved a fortune there do you know what I mean um, over three cars as well so yeah handy tip if you're going to do a Morocco trip that isn't with us then uh, go fuck yourself. No, uh, no. But you know, wait till you get there. You can haggle a bit, um, and uh, yeah, they'll do you a bit of a deal. So um, it works really well. Anyway, I'm going through customs. Guess this is something we've got to get used to as well. You shit on the floor. Fifty euro fine. We're going. Onto the ship, all these adventure bikes look. We are loading up. So we're just going on now, actually properly going on. Um, they've put us to one side because we're tall. It's actually a catamaran ferry thing. Um, just waiting on instructions, really, of what we're going to do. So, Jack, what do you do for work? Uh, well, uh, work on boats. So, what do you do on a holiday? Well, I went on a boat. <laughs> Even better, you went on a ferry. My favourite. Don't know what... I don't think anyone knows what they're doing. It's not very busy, this. Like, the Isle of Wight ferry is ten times busier than this. Uh, I'm from the south, so the Isle of Wight ferry has been many a times. But yeah, let's go. So for some for some reason I've got a reverse on. I don't know why. But that's what he's asked me to do. Left side. Left side. No, it's, this is like Titanic. Oh shit, I probably shouldn't say that. No, don't say that. <laughs> I just meant like a staircase. I just want Lego. They got food on here, haven't they? Yeah. I might just have something off here. Complimentary perfume.
Kurt's his first time on a car ferry. Yeah. All the seats are facing forward at least. This looks nice. Crazy. Here we are. Um, I'd love to say actually this is Africa, but it's technically still Spain. Oh, look how clean that is! Little short wheelbase patch. Oh, it's called a Montero out here. Um, yeah, technically this is still part of Spain, but it's in Africa, kind of thing. But we've just got to come out of here. It's a tiny, tiny sliver on the top of the map and then uh, go through customs and then we are in Africa so beautiful weather mid 20s degrees already and uh, I am excited we've got about six hours drive ahead of us um, to get down to Marrakesh tonight and then we got a couple of days of chilling out round a pool doing nothing they wouldn't let you out if they didn't want you <laughs> First roundabout. Got it, alright, we'll come find it. So, this is, like I say, this is still part of Spain, even though we've got the ferry over. Um, this is still a uh, sliver, this is part of Spain. Um, hence why it's uh, much cheaper crossing. Um, like I say, it's like the UK going to the Isle of Wight or, you know, just other sort of British Isles if you like but um, we've now lost Curtis he said he was at the first roundabout yeah. which he wasn't but this is quite a nice place so far you got some boy? Ah, oh, we've gone past him, he's behind us. Yeah, he's behind us, chat. So, just been stopped by Cus. 